Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Today, I'm going to discuss how LizWorks was founded and, and formed and, and how and why I do what I do. Um, I started the company in about 2014, and my background before that was uh, I was in art history and English and actually film major, I guess, in college, and always loved art and always loved design, um, always loved putting things together in, I guess, unique and unusual ways. Um, and then I went right out of school. I started to collect art, and actually the very first day I went out um, was when Metro Gallery was still, a lot of galleries were still in Soho, and the first pieces of art that I wound up buying were by Cindy Sherman and Louise Lawler, and at the time, the artists Pruitt and Early, which are now Rob Pruitt. And I was, you know, turned on and excited by these artists and, and, and sort of their vision and putting everything together, and things just took off from there. And I always have collected and, and enjoy it and love it and, and do it from a place of passion. There I am. So anyway, um, and then with the collecting and sort of, you know, things happening, I guess, in New York, I started getting very involved in uh, boards of museums and institutions. And the first one I got really involved with was the Israel Museum. And then I went on to be involved with the Whitney and Creative Time and the Film Society and then the Joyce. And my involvement was really philanthropically or oriented to you know, really taking the institutions into higher places of earnings and money and, and philanthropy, and to really produce events and, and go to sensibility that was sort of unique and unexpected as sort of a theme throughout everything that I do. So um, it went from there that I realized how much I really do love doing these things, and, and I do think there is a, sem a unique talent to what I do. I'd love to, I was thinking, hmm, be interesting to sort of start my own company. And I was really possessed by this idea of creating the dinner table as a canvas for artists. And at the time, I had met Michelle Bernadeau, who had done one plate, I think, with Jeff Koons for the Art Production um, Foundation. And I was like, hmm, he's interested in this, you know, and I wound up talking to him. And that's how it all sort of began, that I brought Jeff Koons over to Bernadeau and we did the entire Banality series plates of his and a, a vase, and then a lot of other artists went, I brought over to them as well. Julian Schnabel, uh, Kara Walker, uh, Marco Brambilla, Marina Abramovich, and it was all in the realm of, of plates and designs of that nature. Still hadn't started my company, but it was the whole idea of really putting things together that sort of did have a jewel-like feel or, or however you want to say it. So. Then the formation of LizWorks started, and my first idea was to take eyewear and create artist-designed eyewear, because I loved the idea of the abstraction of, the abstraction of, um, of art and the literalization of vision and merging them together. And the artist I worked with at the time was the Japanese photographer Sugimoto, and then the Brazilian photographer, Vic Munez. And we made limited editions that, again, felt very jewel-like without really being in the realm, obviously, of jewelry. And then, you know, as you sort of, when you're starting things with, with yourself or with anything, you, you watch what you do, you take a step back, and then you watch again, and you, you listen to yourself, and you mull, and you live with ideas that just keep bouncing around in your head. And one bounced into... Um, Charmed, the charm bracelet, the idea of a charm bracelet and, and its importance historically to women and that it had sort of really faded um, in importance, I suppose. And I thought how, you know, cool would it be to, to bring it back and, um, hi guys, and then, um, and then bring it back in, in a, with a contemporary voice and a contemporary dialogue. So I m lived with, you know, what artist, how to do it, and all of this. And I came up with a list of arguably um, who I felt 
would really be interesting together, but seven of the, the most important living artists, um, female artists of, of this time. And I contacted all of them. The stories are sort of cool. One was working with uh, archiving her mother's, Lori Simmons actually, photos of her mother's charms at the time, and so that was sort of meant to be. And uh, the other artist, uh, Micheline Thomas, had just uh, deinstalled a show in Aspen and was watching the show Charmed on TV when when I actually called. And, and Rachel Feinstein, another one, had actually just taken her daughter uh, to a little charm store, I think, in Times Square that sold, pl sold plastic charms. So there was something right from the beginning about this project that felt really right, really charmed, and really blessed. But the idea of it was really to take these seven women, I love the number seven, put them together in a way that's never been done before and, and um, play with the idea of tradition and, and contemporary and past and present into future and, and old and new. Um, and that was really important to me. I didn't realize how important that was to me until I started to do it. And sort of from that moment on, all the projects I do that I consider that are wearable art slash jewelry or jewelry wearable art, however you want to term it, all play with the dance and the dialogue of history and, and present. And, and not hitting you over the head with it, but I think in an important, important way um, with all of that. So this bracelet, what I do is I, I make editions. They're all signed. They come with certificates of authenticity. And it's really um, this incredible process of, of just working and collaborating with these artists. And as you'll see through the slides that I'm going to show you, they're really, in my mind, what I'm making is an extension of the body of the artist's work. And they really are, if I can say it this way, miniature sculptures. So then I went on just in a quick thing. I didn't know what to do after Charmed because it was such a big project. I need to bring these seven women together um, in this museum-like piece. The, the piece actually, I think it was Dodi Kajansky or whatever wrote um, for, she was a freelance uh, writer and I think she still is, and she wrote an article for Vogue the year it came out of the 10 most important shows to see in New York. And she actually put the Charm bracelet in one of the shows. So I think there's a lot going on, which I really do thank the, the um, you know, Jewelry Week for asking me to speak, because I think that what I am doing is fusing and bringing together all the disciplines that we have out there in, in materials and, and artistry and, and jewelry and design and all of that together in, in a really um, important way that will follow in the tradition. Obviously, it's been there from Picasso and Calder and the, you know, Louise Bourgeois. I mean, there's, there's extraordinary historic jewelry that's out there. And I think to stay in that realm um, with these updated women and all these things that are, that, you know, I think it's, thank you for asking me to talk about it. So anyway, I went on and I did a little a bowl with the Campana brothers and embraced the world of oatmeal. And then I came back to um, which was also jewel-like, but nevertheless, I came back to um, exploring wearable art. And I got really, really focused on cameos and that they are really this incredible, incredible material, this incredible point of history um, of artisans that have really been close to forgotten. And I love the idea that they were really this 16th century form of portraiture, basically, that was just sort of semi-dying or turning into this other realm that, that, that it wasn't. And um, I decided to play with, again, contemporizing it with contemporary artists. So I went to two artists, um, Catherine Opie and, again, Cindy Sherman, to work with the cameos. And the idea of this one was, for Cindy in particular, the, the, what for me was sort of the twisted fun of this whole piece, or this whole collection, rather, is to take, again, the cameo, which I'm sure everybody knows, but I'll get into it. It's, it's shells, and you choose through. I, found, I had to go for about a year it took me, maybe even a little bit more, to find the right master carver in an area in Italy called Torre del Greco, outside of Naples or in Naples. 
and um, to find a carver to work with cameos who really, really understood and, and, and got the essence of what these artists were really doing with their work. So, um, well, first I went to Cindy and I said, I would love to take your, your Instagram series because we all know if in the room the artist Cindy Sherman and her, her photographs and her extensive, extraordinary body of work. She had just started an Instagram series around that time, I guess, uh, I don't know, 2016 or so, something like that. And it was just a, a blast to watch. I mean, anybody can say they're, they're fun. They're, they're great, the, the pieces that she put on there. But I thought, how fabulous is the contemporization of the Instagram selfie to pair it with what was the selfie in 16th century um, in carving of cameos. So um, she's like, sign me up, I'm into it. Because the file was rather small. She didn't know what to do with it Any, you know, in that realm in terms of large photography. And it just felt really right. So we went through, chose the photos that, that would be used, the images for the cameos. I wound up finding a cameo maker, which as I said, took about a year. And, and we just got into the project and found a jeweler who I work with outside of, everything's produced in Italy, in Torre del Greco, outside of Milan, um, and started diving deep into this. And the carvings are exceptional. I mean, there's, I have one man who, who carves everything, and, and he just, he, as I'm gonna say it again, but he just gets to the soul and the essence of what I wanna see and, and, and certainly what the artist wants to see as well. So it's carving and cameos. The cameos that I mostly work with, well, there are two. There's sardonyx and cornelian. This is sardonyx. And then the choice of the stones for the earrings is inspired, well, it's all inspired, obviously, by Pensive. We named her, her Instagram image Pensive, but by the coloration of, of the background. Because obviously, I'm working with the cameo and keeping its natural integrity color is, I'm not applying it actually to the cameo. So here is the piece, just another shot of it. Um, that's the back. Obviously pieces are signed and with additions. Uh, the gold I worked with, I actually made a patina that's a mixture of rose and gold that has never been used before because again, I wanted to sort of play with the idea of contemporary and, and tradition, and I felt the softness of this color sort of merged the dance of, of that. And here's Cindy um, wearing the earrings at uh, Wall Street Journal Magazine Innovators Award, where she was honored and chores them all the time. Looks fabulous and loves them and, and all of that. And, and then this amazing moment happened to me while I was actually in uh, Greece with my, my kids who are here. Uh, and I was running in the, the mountains of or whatever in Sifnos and got this call that Kate Blanchett had seen the pieces in, in Venice and wanted to wear them. So she tried everything on and adored these and, and that was sort of this amazing moment. And I don't think anybody, I mean, she just looks pretty amazing in those. So that was quite exciting. Um, to go on about so continuing with the pieces with Cindy, I'm actually wearing the piece that you see the photo of now. But what I really love about this project is um, the twistedness of it. I, I really do. I mean, you know in cameos traditionally the use of gems and pearls and stones and the, the, the symmetry, the regularity, all of the things that are there, and to sort of play with that and and keep the, the, the ancientness of it is, you know, um, is really, really exciting for me. So that piece is called Spa. That's the back of it as well. And the pearls you can see are mixtures of pink, grays, whites, and yellows. And it's intentional that they're off center. And then the next piece we worked with Cornelian and this one's Halo from her Instagram series. And the way that I interpreted how to reinterpret the light of the halo for Cindy was to, in the next slide you'll see, put a, a beautiful, slightly yellowed diamond on the side. Um, and I love this piece. I have to say, Cindy wears this one every day. Um, 
is so I'm sort of you know into actually I think Kate Blanchett has this one as well so um, those are the two materials that one can work with with cameo as as shells so then we went on to do baby who is just a trip this little one uh, I just think he's crazy and if you see what was really exciting for me and for Cindy as well since knowing her work she's a photographer and everything is you know flat one dimensionally for her to actually see her work in 3d was sort of this amazing moment and and revelate re revelation for her and i am nuts about this piece baby i mean the the little nose and the the profile it's uh makes me happy so that's sort of the intent with that. And again, it's the same sort of gold. Each piece is handmade. Everything about it is handmade because each shell has a slightly different contour of a kind. They all, you know, um, they're all the same, but they're all not the same. I mean, you know, the, the, as I was starting to say, the carvers have to choose from thousands and thousands of shells. And then once they choose the shell that they want to have, then they have to choose the part of the shell that is the canvas that they carve into. And it is one shell, it is one piece, and where you see the difference of coloration is the natural element of the actual cameo shell. So it's, it's an extraordinary process that I have total, total revere and admiration and, and unqualified respect for my um, carvers. I think they are extraordinary. So to give you all of that, and then the artist who also we did cameo with was Catherine Opie. And her work is, she's an American photographer, and her work is both tough and, and poignant. Um, it's got a very old masterly feel, and it's also, you know, in your face with contemporization. She's a, you know, hardcore uh, lesbian and she's really leading a life you know with the tattoos and the whole thing but there's a beauty in the portrayal of all of this that really does liken itself to a, a dutch you know old masters painting in the realm of photography if you will I mean, this really is you know madonna and child um in in this extraordinary way and to take that imagery and bring it into cameo for me was just a marvel and um i just think this piece is amazing and um we made three of them uh each unique and i just think the use of the the gems the way they are um is you know it's it should be and will be you know one day in, in the vienna collection of cameos i'm 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 sure this piece is pretty i mean they're all incredible but this one's twistedly off the charts, which I might specialize in. So then I had done a lot of work, obviously, with women and female artists and female energy, but I was really absolutely intrigued with the idea of obviously staying with wearable art slash jewelry um, and the idea of, of old and new, the same, the same concepts, but I really wanted to explore it with, with male energy, male artist, and to start bringing it into sort of non-gender. And this was before all of our world, oh sorry, has sort of become that, but, but that's, that's really where my, my direction was going. So there's an artist um, named Rasheed Johnson, and he did a series named, titled Anxious Men. And the paintings, paintings, you know, they're really mostly paintings, are enormous in scale and and they really do give off uh, a sense of anxiety and tension and and the enormity of that for everyone however we all interpret and and take it on and I called him and you know said I'd love to do something with you in the world of wearable art and and he's like cool I'm in so we did a drawing specifically for this piece which is the, obviously the drawing which for this whole collection um, and and began that way and then during COVID why this red painting is there I'll show you he got well I'll go into this the red paintings were made during during COVID 
Uh, he had never worked in that color before. He had always done really black and white, mostly black, you know, black on white canvas and the scribbles and that, that intensity. And I guess his response in a very big way to COVID um, was to create these red paintings. The next. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, um, so this was happening as we were, you know, doing the collection. And um, I decided, I mean, I thought what he, I think these paintings are beyond powerful. I think the time, the period of time they were made, as we all know in this room, was beyond powerful. Um, so the original idea of Anxious Men. I incorporated the, the, the red, his red paintings into the works. And here he is wearing the pieces that we made um, on the cover of White Wall. And he's in the cuff and the rings and the whole thing, which I'm wearing one now, um, but was to incorporate the red. And that was seen through the touch of the ruby. I don't think I have, I wish I did. I had, how we did is I took the patina of the reds and I put it inside um, well, on the military tag there, on the gold ones, the back is the red patina of the of his paintings, and obviously the red cord is in line with that. And the other material I used for this collection is titanium, which I was really interested in using. And again, it's a very contemporary material. With you know, the military tag is is a very traditional object to say the least, and we all know the meaning that goes along with that. So I really wanted to experiment with material and to really incorporate his new level of addressing anxiety within, within this collection. Um, so that's, that was the interpretation of his work from then. The signet ring also goes to why I chose the signet is the idea of just the tradition of the signet ring, what it means historically and everything. and, and in, uh, in European times, you know, it's this seal with, like, you seal things with this ring, et cetera, et cetera, and then the ring band. And you can see it touch on the ring band of what the inside of the ring looks like. And it's that red enamel. And I just think these pieces are, uh, they're extraordinary. They, they feel amazing. They look amazing. Um, I think they convey the power of his work that was in this large scale and obviously this smaller scale. I think they're important. And I think what I what he and I did achieve was really a non-gender jewelry collection, which I think is really, really um, important going forward. I think men are becoming much more adventuresome with, with adornments, uh, particularly wearable art, jewelry, however they see it. I think there's a an untapped exciting um, world out there that men can join women um, with all of this. So then we went on to make a cuff as well in both 
titanium and gold, as you can see. And the, the, the pieces are, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of this collection. I think they're, they're exceptional. I really do. And I love uh, a lot of people who, you know, follow my, my business is very niche. Um, my, my clients are very niche in this. They've, they've broken out to want to introduce this collection to their children um, as a beginning of a way, sort of an introduction to art and and its wearability and its importance, and particularly with the military tags of the titanium and the gold, which for both uh, male and female, which is um, a very exciting thing for me. And then this I just thought I'd show you, which I think is interesting. It's my jeweler producers using the rhodium to produce um, the actual drawing of Rashid's and they sort of take a liquid I'm not exactly sure uh, I think a lead liquid onto more onto the titanium and paint it on and then it seeps in um, and and then you get your radium Rashid ring or cuff or pendant created um, and that, watch for a second, I'll turn on. I find it sort of fascinating, so I hope everyone's with me on this. <laughs> okay. Um, and as I said, I mean, each art handmade, so the process of all of this, and again, every collection I do has additions and and certificates and all of that. So that's it. And then this piece um, was uh, anyone watching Successions in this room or or whatever. Besides, but yeah, uh, Jeremy Strong had had come to me and I seen my work or something of the sort, and absolutely fell in love with this piece and had to have it as a pivotal arc for his um, for his character on the show, which I think I can reveal will be, I think he'll be wearing it in, in an episode or two, like in two episodes, I'm not sure. It's episode seven is where it will be. And he just, um, this piece of uh, press just came out a, a week or so ago of him wearing it. I just think the image is amazing. Um, but his his intensity and his gravitation to this collection uh, was a thrill as well. So that's where, you know, what I have, well, I can leave it on that, to show you. And then I went on after Rashid, which I don't have images of, but to do a whole collection with the artist Robert Longo. And that also went back to working with cameos for one of his iconic um, images, the rose, and I did earrings and a pendant and uh, a ring and very, very tiny collection. Of, I, I none of them are large collections, but this one was really small because I felt there was something even jewel-like within everything being jewel-like. Um, so there was a rose and then a bullet hole uh, image that I did, again, as a pendant and a ring, two pendants and a ring. And I loved the idea of what a rose and what a bullet, what they could signify to to whoever they want. You know, can, is one life, is one death, is one beautiful, is one not, is one strong, is one fragile. So there's always sort of a lot going on contextually that always goes back, obviously, to the art um, that goes into the world of, of jewelry, which creates wearable art. So that's what Liz Works is all about. Thanks for listening.